Hey guys, what's happening? It's Richard here. Welcome to a awesome, spectacular, brand new episode of comics. So, do you guys like my uh, dirty hobo look I'm rocking right now? <laughs> I haven't shaved, and I don't even know why I don't shave all the time, because I can't grow a beard. And I'm rocking uh, a hat, uh, which I haven't rocked in a while. But it's Batman themed, so it's okay. Yeah, this is the new look of 2013. This is the new hip look. Everybody's going to be doing it. Just watch. Well, technically, they're kind of already doing it. Anyways, we got a ton of fun stuff to talk about, so let's start off with comics media. Comics media! So in comics media, I figured I'd talk about uh, the Oscars, because the uh, Academy Award nominations were announced last week, last Tuesday, to be specific. And, you know, the kind of films you would think would get nominated got nominated. I think the, the film that got the most nominations was Lincoln. And of all the comic book movies that came out this year, there was only one that got a nomination, and that was The Avengers for uh, visual effects. But obviously for some, the big upset was that The Dark Knight Rises received absolutely no nominations. Now personally, I mean, I don't necessarily care what gets nominated, what doesn't get nominated, because it doesn't, it doesn't change the way I feel about a particular movie. I mean, hell, uh, Citizen Kane, who was... Uh, which is a movie that's revered as the greatest movie of all time for a lot of people, uh, got nominated for Best Picture but didn't win. Even m movies that are incredibly influential, like Metropolis, for example, which is my favorite movie ever made, that movie got terrible reviews and wasn't even considered for any kind of uh, big award. So, ipso facto, awards don't necessarily matter in the long run. Because strangely enough, the crappiest movie in the world could easily be considered for people down the line the most influential movie in the world. But in the end, uh, congratulations to the Avengers and everyone else who was nominated. If you win, another congrats to you. If you don't win, you're still awesome. And to those who aren't nominated, you're probably better than what was. Now let's mosey on over to one of my favorite segments, Indie Comics. Indie Comics! So in the Indie Comics side of things, I'm going to be reviewing for you guys Star Wars Number 1 by Brian Wood with art by Carlos de Anda. So Star Wars number one, simply called Star Wars, is um, a comic that's set within the, sort of the universe of the films of the original trilogy. The initial story takes place after the events of New Hope. And we're seeing all of our favorite characters in this series. We're seeing Han, Luke, Leia, Chewie, Vader, uh, C-3PO, R2-D2. They're all back and they're all awesome. Hence it's saying classic characters, all new Star Wars. Now, I, I, am, I like Star Wars. I'm, I'd say I'm a fan. I'm not a massive fan. I don't like everything Star Wars. The only thing Star Wars related that I've ever had fun with and checked out outside of the films is the video games. I love the Star Wars video games. They're all, they all tend to be fun. But this is actually my first Star Wars comic I ever purchased. I never really checked out the other Star Wars comics. I haven't really heard a lot of good things about it. But besides the fact that it's Star Wars and I kind of liked the premise behind it, I also liked the creative team of Brian Wood and Carlos de Anda. And they both truthfully deliver. Uh, the, the writing in this book is incredibly exceptional. The only downside, though, to the writing is the fact that there's a lot of exposition. So maybe, hopefully, that dies down a little bit with the second issue, but it's, it's pretty evident in here, so that's kind of the downside of it. The art by Carlos de Anda, I absolutely love. I've been, a, I've been a fan of his since I first saw his work in the Arkham City comic book, and I was surprised that he actually helped design the video game, so that's really cool. And now he's on to bigger and better things. He's doing a Star Wars comic, and he's doing a damn good job with it. So at the end of the day, Star Wars number one uh, from me gets a uh, four and a half out of five. Very good first issue. Plus, it's two ninety nine and comes with a digital copy. You'll never see that from Marvel or DC. DC will make you pay four dollars. Marvel will make you pay three. It's ridiculous. But anyways, that's about it for the regular news. Now let's move it on to the greatest segment on the show. Comics, comics. So this week for Comics Comments, ladies and gentlemen, Agent Coulson is alive! That's right, everybody's favorite new character from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Agent Phil Coulson, is in fact alive. Now how do we know this? Well, because they said that uh, he was going to be on the S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show that they're making and it takes place after the Avengers. Not even in the Marvel Cinematic Universe do people stay dead. That's called being faithful to the source material, people. I mean, come on, Chris Nolan, you should have you should have brought back Two Face if you really wanted to be faithful to the source material. Psh. You know, because you know you know no character ever stays dead in comics. So if you really wanted to translate it well, I'm just saying. Nah, I tease, I tease. It is kind. Of, it is a kind. Of, I don't know. I've, I I kind of have a weird 
negative feeling by the fact that he's alive, but I'm happy that he's back. Maybe it's just that natural comic book reader instinct that you kind of get pissed off that death is meaningless in, f in, in comic books, and now it's meaningless in film. But anyways, in the comment section below, how do you feel about Coulson being alive? I'm sure a lot of you are as excited as I am. I know I'm very excited. I don't know why I have a conflicting feeling. So yes, in the comment section below, tell me how you feel about the return of Agent Coulson, because I want to know. Anyways, that's about it for me. Don't forget to like this video. Follow Carter and I on Facebook, Twitter, and DirectorsCutRadio.com. Links are down below. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Favorite the video if you want to. And I'll see you guys next time with a brand new episode of comics. Hopefully, Dirty Hobo Richard does not return. <laughs> Bye, guys.